Hey guys, Shane from Blind Dog Blades, and I got another uh, Coleman video for you. I know you want to see blacksmithing videos, but wife brought this home today, and I figured I'd shoot a quick video on it. Um, kind of go over the things that you want to look for when you're buying one of these old gas lanterns. Um, I've got my wife trained pretty good. She knows what to look for and she does a pretty good job of finding these things. She got this one for eight bucks at the local thrift store. It's a 228F, no, 228H made in 1974 so it's probably I, don't, I think it is my newest lantern that I have but it's in pretty good shape so some of the things you want to look for when you're buying one of these is just look at the overall condition of it you don't want big dents and lots of rust you want to make sure the valves all turn Make sure the cleaning lever works. I'll look at the fuel cap. Make sure the gasket inside looks good. This one has a little bit of rust on it that I'll clean off. And you want to shine a light down inside. And make sure there's not a bunch of rust in it. This one's still got a little fuel in it, so I'll take that out in a sec. But it looks pretty clean in there. There's a little rust right around the opening here. And I'll clean that out in a second. You also want to check the pump. Make sure it works. This one is not working. So it probably just needs a little bit of oil on the, I don't know if this one's got leather, it probably has leather. Some of the newer ones have a, a rubber cup in there. This one should have a leather one. So we can put a little bit of oil in there, then we can pump it up, make sure the check valve is working. Want to make sure your globe's not cracked. And that's probably about it. And if you see one like this, this one, I would just pass on it. See, there's a ton of rust. The cap on this one's frozen. Valve wheel, it does not turn. Cleaning lever does not turn. The vent's actually in pretty decent shape. Globe is obviously cracked, which is too bad because this was a nice globe. This is the original. This one's a 228. <clears throat> Let's see if I can find a damn logo on it. Fifty-three. So I'm not sure which one that is. I'm trying to make it out there. Coleman. Hell, I don't know. It's a 220. I mean, this can be restored, and I might do a video on restoring it because just about everything in here is rebuildable. As long as the, the font's in decent shape and no holes, pretty much everything else can be rebuilt. This has got a lot of rust. It looks like this was laying on its side. So you see it's just got rust just on this side of the bell, the side of the cage. It's not real deep, but I mean, if you see something like this at the store or swap meet or wherever, I would pass on it. There's tons of these 220s out there, and they're not worth putting a whole lot of effort in, unless you're a rare one. So.
So let's look at this 228 again. I said it's got a little bit of rust right around the opening here. I'm just going to take a wire brush and kind of clean that out. Like I said, this still has fuel in it. So all this rust that I'm cleaning out is going to fall in down into it. So we definitely want to replace the fuel. Still wall. I mean, a little rust right here is not going to hurt, but it's better to clean it up so it doesn't continue rusting and flaking off into your gas, your air and uh, fuel pickup tube inside the tank will pick up all that small stuff and. Clog up your generator and generator tip. That yeah, looks better. I'll squirt a little WD on there to hopefully keep it from rusting more. That looks better. Kind of clean her up a little bit. Looks like it's got somebody's name on there. Murray, M-U-R-R-I. That come off pretty easy. These are just some Clorox wipes. They work pretty good for cleaning. Got some paint splatter and stuff on there, so I'll probably grab a, some acetone and or some denatured alcohol. See if I can get all that off. It won't hurt the enamel or porcelain. I can't remember what the hell that stuff is, but it won't hurt that. Now the fount, it would hurt that, so don't use acetone on there. Bottle can. 
that I pour all my dirty stuff in, mark it dirty, and I use this. Uh, when I get enough in there, I'll just pour it into my handy gas plant. That thing will burn anything, so. So you can see there was some rust flakes in there. Looks like there is a little rust in there. So we'll go ahead and put some fresh fuel in here. Run it for a sec. And later, I'm going to put some vapor rust in there with some uh, BBs. Let it soak, and shake it around with them BBs, and that'll bust up any rust and flakes that are in there. But I'm not going to do that tonight, so. So let me go grab some fresh fuel. I'll be back. So it looks like all my other funnels are in my camping gear. So I'm going to pull that out, wash it out, blow it out before we run any more fuel through there. Be right back. Okay, get that funnel cleaned out. Put a little fuel in here. First time lighting these, I recommend doing it outside. But I've got fire, I got two, three fire extinguishers in here handy, so if we do have a flame up, flare up, put it out. Let's see, we gotta put some oil on that, don't we? The oil of the leather. Let me go grab a leather cup and show you what it looks like. 
This is what one looks like. It's just a leather cup. This is one that I made a while back. And they dry out, so you just need to put a little oil down the tube and it'll absorb into the leather. And that just creates a seal on inside of that tube there so it'll pump air into it. And you can use just three in one oil, any kind of oil, WD-40 even. I like to use mink oil. And then I'll put a couple drops in there. So you see how that's pushing that back out? It means that check valve inside there is stuck. So you want to make sure you turn that to the right. That'll seal it up. And we'll have to pull that check valve out and clean it. But for now, we should be able to run this thing. That generator is picking up some shit. This is a cleaning lever. On top of the generator, you got a little orifice. So using this cleaning lever, it moves inside the generator. There's a, a, a rod in there with a very fine point that runs up through the generator tip or nozzle and cleans it. It is working, but I think I'm going to clean that generator and pull that check valve out and clean it. grab a generator and show you what I'm talking about on that okay so this is a spare generator I've got so you get your generator tube you get a nozzle or an orifice on top it's got a real very small opening 
and inside it, got a spring and some packing. You know, I don't know if you can see that. There's a real small wire on the end of this. And that's what cleans that orifice. When these get dirty, they just get gunked up. And you can take them apart, clean them, clean them with some carb, carb cleaner or You just want to be real careful of that wire on the end there. And this little hook here is connected to an uh, eccentric block inside. And this is also connected to it. So when you twist this lever, it moves this up and down. But the lantern's working. I haven't even looked at the globe on this one. It is Pyrex, so it's the original globe. Not made in China, like the newer ones are. So we'll let that cool down and we'll tackle that uh, check valve. So this is a check valve. That's what's down inside the bottom of this pump tube. It's got a small still BB in the end of it. I don't know if you can hear that rattling. And that's what uh, keeps the pressure from coming back out let you pump air through but it keeps it from coming back out now to remove these it can kind of be a bitch a big screwdriver does not work I mean you might get lucky once in a while but it'll strip it almost guaranteed it'll strip it so one thing that works good that I use a lot is an old file. You can see that's a good tight fit. So you can stick that file down there, get on her and back her out. And what I like to do is I'll mount that file in my uh, bench vise and then take the lantern and actually slip it down over the file and turn the lantern rather than trying to turn this. That seems to work better. Or, this is another tool that I made. It's just a, was it, 3 8 inch uh, breaker bar. I just cut the end off. Ground the, ground the, the shape that I needed. This bushing slips down inside the tube here. It keeps everything centered. And I can just wrench it out. And that works as good as anything. Alright, what I do with my needle nose. Work the pressure out of this. I think it's cooled down enough. And you got a little clip here that holds the cap in place. Sometimes a screwdriver works better. Well, my fingers ain't working today.
So here's your pump. You can see that oil soaked in pretty good. Now sometimes you can get lucky and squirt some uh, carb cleaner down in there. So that piece screws into your check valve. And when you turn her to the right, that seals it, keeps the air from escaping. So even if that's leaking, that'll still stop it. So if you got one that's leaking, just give her a crank, tighten that up. I'll be right back. I gotta find the carb cleaner. I'll squirt a little carb and choke cleaner in there. Stand her on its side so it soaks in. Sometimes this works, a lot of times it don't. It's still warm up there. That a little pump and that'll push that cleaner down into it. Probably ought to stand it up on the side and do that little. Hmm, hmm, hmm. What do we got here? The Coleman fuel. So I had a leak somewhere. Oh no, maybe I spilled it. That's what I did. Never mind. Spilled it when I was leaning it back. Had me scared for a sec, so I'm going to let that soak. And we'll see if that takes care of it. Okay, that's been soaking about 10 minutes. Let's see if it took care of the problem. Sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you don't. So let me pull this vent off from the globe. See that original Coleman globe. Clear that opening a little bit, see if we can get this in there now. It's 
sitting on the burrs on the screws. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna mount this in my vise. down over That one out actually come out pretty damn easy. These are usually a bugger. Well, it's moving. You hear that? <clears throat> so I might have a little crud built up in there. We'll give it a soak with the carb cleaner. Got enough in here. So we'll let that soak for a bit. Okay, that's been soaking for a bit. If you don't have carb cleaner, vinegar also works. Heat up some vinegar, get it warm, and drop that into it. It'll clean it up. Blast that with some air. Then we'll get her put back in. It looks good and clean down in there.
Shit, there we go, spilling fuel again. Pushing does not want to fit these newer tubes. Fit the old ones just fine. Should be good and tight. Why I got this apart, I'm going to kind of clean her up a little bit in here. This is just some real fine steel wool. I don't know if it's four odd or not. It's got just a couple areas has got just a little bit of surface rust. Alright, good as new. Okay, I think I lost some footage, but I got the check valve back in, and I went ahead and cleaned it up, just wiped it down with some uh, mineral spirits, cleaned the vent, ventilator, and the globe. And right now I'm going to go ahead and pull that generator out. See how dirty it is. And when you do this, you need this in the up position. Slide out. So I don't know if you can see that little eccentric block. When you turn the lever, it moves that up and down. And that's nice and dirty. Let's see what I did. That's still When you clean these, you need to be real careful of that thin end piece there. Boy, that's all gunky. Here's some acetone. That should work. Alright, 
think that's much better. Let me go find my little wrench to take that orifice out. Well, I don't know what I did with my little wrench I made for this, but a little monkey wrench should work. It's all dunked up in there too. So I'm going to soak that. Let me squirt some cleaner through it. Maybe that'll work. Get that back. Well, the spring's moving now, but that packing's not going to come out. Yeah, that packing's not going to come out, so I may just have to get a new generator for them. They're cheap. You can get them at Wally World. Stick that up in the hole there. Make sure your rod is lined up with your block. Then you can turn her down and lock her in place. Snug her up. It turns a little easier. Well, I think the footage that I lost is this check valve is working now. not push it out on me.
That looks much better. You know, it looks like my camera's about ready to die. So I'll charge it for a sec and put this back together. Cut her all back together. Excuse me. Um, it's burning good. It's not bad for eight bucks. One thing I forgot to mention, the label that was here, when I was cleaning it, the corner top popped off. It was dry and brittle. <clears throat> I thought I had more of them in the back, but all they had was the yellow labels. That one had a, a white border around it instead of the yellow. So I'll have to get some more of them. Put a new decal on it. I'm still going to clean the tank out on this. Um, like I said I use this vapor rust. You can get this stuff at Harbor Freight. It's kind of pricey. It's like 25 bucks for a gallon. But fill the font up with that, and I'll uh, put a handful of BBs in there. Let it soak for about a week, and then I'll come out about once or twice every day and give it a shake. That'll help break up all the rust and all the flakes that are in there. And hopefully after a week of soaking, we'll have a good clean tank. So, I think that'll be it for this video. Not a bad looking lantern. Okay guys, hope you liked the video. Give me a thumbs up if you do, thumbs down if you don't. And we'll talk to you later.